You may know that the person we just had as a guest on this show, Chris Matthews here at MSNBC, does a hardball college tour. Right before the midterm elections in 2006, Chris had Senator John McCain on the college tour with him in Iowa. They took questions from the crowd. Our military needs as many fine young men and women as it can get. Yes. So why do we still have a policy that discriminates on the basis of declared sexual orientation? I listen to people like General Colin Powell, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and literally every military leader that I know, and they testified before Congress, that they felt that the don't ask, don't tell policy was the most appropriate way to conduct ourselves in the military. I understand the opposition to it, and I've had these debates and discussions, but the day that the, the leadership of the military comes to me and says, Senator, we ought to change the policy, then I think we ought to consider seriously changing it because those leaders in the military are the ones we give the responsibility to. That was John McCain speaking in 2006, telling Hardball that the day the leadership of the military says that don't ask, don't tell should be changed, on that day, he'd consider changing the policy. That day was today. It is my personal belief that allowing gays and lesbians to serve openly would be the right thing to do. No matter how I look at this issue, I cannot escape being troubled by the fact that we have in place a policy which forces young men and women to lie about who they are in order to defend their fellow citizens. For me, personally, it comes down to integrity. Theirs as individuals and ours as an institution. During the State of the Union address, the President announced he will work with Congress this year to repeal the law known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He subsequently directed the Department of Defense to begin the preparations necessary for a repeal of the current law and policy. I fully support the President's decision. Today, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, and the Defense Secretary, Bob Gates, both expressed unreserved support for repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And even though John McCain is on record saying that's what he would need to hear to be able to consider changing the policy, that isn't how John McCain reacted at today's hearing. At all. In fact, he sort of blew a gasket. I'm, I'm deeply disappointed uh, in your statement, Secretary Gates. Your statement obvious is one which is clearly biased without the view of Congress being taken into consideration. You are embarking on saying it's not whether the military prepares to make the change, but how we best prepare for it without ever hearing from members of Congress. So for John McCain, as long as the military leadership is against gay people serving in the military, he wants to defer to their judgment. But if the military leadership is for gay people serving in the military, he thinks the military leadership should defer to him. Last year, John McCain also did an interview with Anna Marie Cox on Air America Radio, in which the senator said that on his very first day in office, if he'd been elected president, he would have asked the chairman of the Joint Chiefs to review Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Right now, the Joint Chiefs have said that the policy is working and that in their view, it should be kept in place. But again, if I were president, the day I was elected or sworn in, I would have asked the chairman of the Joint Chiefs to conduct a, 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 an in-depth study and come up with recommendations for me. The military is, in fact, doing an in-depth study of Don't Ask, Don't Tell Now, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says he thinks the policy should be repealed. Now that those things John McCain said he'd defer to are actually happening, Senator McCain has changed his mind about them. In addition to John McCain's collapse of credibility and embarrassing loss of temper on this issue today, a couple of important other things happened. First, Senator Carl Levin, the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, made clear that dropping Don't Ask, Don't Tell can happen with not 60 votes, but 50 in the Senate, or, or maybe even 40 this was a sort of subtle but important moment at the hearing. Watch his exchange here with Joe Lieberman. It's up to us we, in the Congress and in the Senate. We've got, to, it, we've got to get 60 votes to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, or else it will remain in effect. Thank you. Uh, unless there's a provision inside the defense authorization bill um, that goes to the floor, which would then require 
an amendment to strike it from the bill, in which case the 60 vote rule would be turning the other way. It, might, it, it is. Might have it, very no, it's good. It is with great appreciation that I accept the higher wisdom of the chairman <laughs> of the committee. Senator Levin is saying that on the Senate side, if repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell could be done as part of a big defense bill, a big defense authorization bill, which is how Don't Ask, Don't Tell became law in the first place, then it would actually take 60 votes to kill the repeal, not 60 votes to hold on to the policy. Which means that even as the military is announcing a year-long process for studying and figuring out the implementation issues of getting rid of the policy, Congress could essentially move right away. There's no reason for Congress to wait. On the Senate side, at least, there is a clear path. The other important thing that happened today is that the opposition to repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell had a bad, bad, bad day in opposition. In addition to Senator McCain doing his big, awkward, angry public flip-flop on the matter, Senator Saxby Chambliss of Georgia tried on an argument that had at least one person in the hearing room, who was sitting about three rows behind me, um, audibly snorting coffee out of his or her nose. This was it. Military society is characterized by its own laws, rules, customs, and traditions, including restrictions on personal behavior that would not be acceptable in civilian society. Examples include alcohol use, adultery, fraternization, and body art. If we change this rule of don't ask, don't tell, what are we going to do with these other issues? It was at that moment um, that Senator Chambliss uttered the phrase body art that I distinctly heard somebody shoot coffee out their nose in the hearing room. Saxby Chambliss, our nation's watchdog over whether more civil rights will inexorably lead to more tattoos. In some, the basic talking points of Republicans against repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, aside from the it'll lead to more tattoos worry, uh, essentially their talking points are left over from 1993. Back then, they were able to turn the issue into bad politics for President Clinton by driving a wedge between him as a commander-in-chief who wanted to get rid of this donut, wanted to get rid of the prohibition on gays in the military, uh, and the military itself. Colin Powell against gays in the military, Bill Clinton for gays in the military, the political advantage went to Colin Powell and the conservatives on his side. That dynamic is over now. And conservatives who are trying to find an anti-gay ally this time around and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs are embarrassing themselves by doing so. Watch this. It does go to, again, a sort of a fundamental principle with me, uh, which is everybody counts. And part of the struggle back to the institutional integrity aspect of this well, I know. We, and, we've and, and, your view. and putting individuals in a position that every single day they wonder whether today is going to be the day and devaluing them in that regard just as inconsistent with us as an institution. Uh, I have served with homosexuals since 1968. Senator McCain spoke to that in his statement. Everybody in the military has, and we understand that. So it is a, a, a number of things which cumulatively, for me personally, get me to this position. Thank Senator you. Sessions, for me, this is, about, this is not about command influence. This is about leadership, and I take that very seriously. And you can see in the face of Senator Jeff Sessions there that that leadership from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, is likely to make all the difference.